you are welcome to my channel thanks for visiting please remember to subscribe if you haven't if you have subscribed and you are visiting again i'm saying a big thank you although before now i have published a very lengthy presentation on blood transfusion there i've handled all blood products and if you want to listen to that it's about two hours 55 minutes you can click on this very thing. but i'm aware that it's not everyone that will have the luxury of sitting down for two hours 55 minutes so i've decided to bring only red blood cells transfusion out here without further ado let's go now like i said earlier all blood products transfusion a to z facts are right here click on this link if you want to get all the necessary pieces of information as well blood products transfusion be it platelets plasma fresh frozen plasma you now whole blood red blood cells that is part of red blood cells cryoprecipitate you now immunoglobulins now albumins and so on including playlists they are all here if you click on this link now before transfusion we must justify the name for that transfusion particularly i'm dealing with pack red blood cells only right now in many textbooks to medical students and nursing students once you see hemoglobin less than 7 gram per dm or less than 70 gram per liter then you are expected to transfuse but not in everyone with this value in fact some authorities will put their own cutoff line as anything less than six anything less than six gram per dm they will transfuse so when you see this and you say okay i'll transfuse yes that's pretty good but under certain situations you may not go for pancreas blood cells even though you have these you can go for alternatives like you can give intravenous iron and you will not transfuse with pancreas blood cells if the affected individual is asymptomatic or not decompensating or the person is young and there are no symptoms or symptoms or you are dealing with chronic iron deficiency anemia though hemoglobin is this value you would rather go for iron but we will not give iron in sickle cell disease patient and anyone with thalassemia in addition to what i've just said as per iron and the alternative still remaining iron but full info could be when you click on this very link so it might not be intravenous iron like i've just said it might be fortified you no know, iron rich foods and then you get the list when you click on this link it might be supplemental iron per aura you get the list if, if you are choosing intravenous iron it might be dextran and dextran will give you the walls nerve lasses might be sodium ferry gluconate Perumositol or sucrose, but sucrose will give you the least anaphylaxis. I'm not trying to promote one over the other, but that is the fact. It is better to give you no know, intravenous ion with erythropoietin in renal failure. Why that? Kidney is helping us to produce erythropoietin that is helpful in bone marrow in production of blood cells. But when the kidney is in trouble, there will be less hydropoietin and will be down with chronic anemia. It is better than um, oral ion, meaning intravenous ion is better when you want to increase hemoglobin faster. In fact, people that will take intravenous ion might you know, end up taking intravenous ion when they are not absorbing the oral ion well, or they are dealing with chronic and possibly still ongoing blood loss then intravenous ion will be better but they are unable to tolerate the oral ion supplement there's still an alternative to you no know, transfusion i mean you don't want to give that paragraph blood cells right 
yeah, certain medications may be you know, helpful in salvaging the situation. But let's get through this very link and get more pieces of information because it's not everyone that, you know, when we switch to medication instead of, you know, paragraph blood cell 4, it might be dangerous. So you may use trinizamic as it depends on the level of bleeding and how you know, severe it is, or vitamin K in case of vitamin K dependent clotting factors like factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, or warfarin. Now there's no pricing in von Willebrand disease that is mine and hemophilia A, progesterone in women, you know, uterine bleeding. The combinant activated factor 7 is helpful in hemophilia A and B and also in early stages of intracranial hemorrhage. Only early stages. Still on alternatives, we can consider erythropoiesis stimulating agent. And if you want to know full info as per that, please click on this very link. Remember, I've just said it, that kidneys are helping us by producing erythropoietin. The erythropoietin will be needed by the bone marrow to do what? in helping to, you know, produce blood cells. But when the kidney is suffering, like in chronic kidney disease, the production of erythropoietin will drop. Then the bone marrow will become inefficient and we are done with anemia, anemia of chronic disease. So the ESAs that could be used will be the following, including the generic. And it will appear in form of international unit per kilogram intravenously or subcutaneously. Still, on alternatives to blood transfusion, then someone will ask me, Why are you wasting your time? I want to know more about paragraph blood cell transfusion. Why are you going around alternatives? Because it's not everybody that will want to take you no know, paragraph blood cells. And it's not all doctors that will want to, to even transfuse. No? So, some will go for preoperative autologous donation. What is that all about? Well, I'll not waste your time because my goal is to bring out a presentation that is shorter than two hours, 55 minutes. So this link will take you to the two hours, 55 minutes, and you're gonna get all necessary info about PAD there. Now, another thing you can do is self-salvage. Here, yeah, the surgeon will collect the blood during surgery, get it filtered and washed, and be reintroduced in the same patient in form of a transfusion, right? And that could be done either intraoperatively or postoperatively. Now, when we have ruled out the possibility of using alternatives, and the decision has been made that, okay, this individual will need pack red blood cells. Then we embark on the legal aspect of the transfusion. And that will be done with the patient or substitute decision maker if the patient is incapable, or parents if we are dealing with children. Consent must be signed and can only be signed and become valid after thorough explanation as per reason or reasons for the transfusion. The type of blood products to be used here, it will be paragraph blood cells, right? Even possible alternatives should be discussed if the situation will warrant using alternatives. But that is not the case most of the time. Okay, then we'll go over possible side effects and possible reactions or complications. You must report all transfusion reaction or reaction promptly to the social decision maker or parent or the patient that is capable. We may seek court order under legal aspects of blood transfusion. If the parent is not acting in the best interest of the children, or such judicial maker is not acting in the best interest of the patient, you can see court order. Why is the legal aspect so important? Well, you can get sued later on, and the other witness, you know, people will tell you we don't want it, and that is a fact. So there is a separate, you know, uh, presentation like I've been referring to from the beginning of this very presentation that has covered all this. There, if you click on you know, the link I've provided, you'll get full explanation. In fact, I give an example of a physician 
that help a Jehovah's Witness you know, through emergency room transfuse the individual, the individual got out, became healthy, and added to court. Sue the doctor for you know, the transfusion, and the Jehovah's Witness patient won the case. Without consent, it is battery. So, with good intention, as a nurse practitioner, as a physician to help, you might get into trouble. Now that we have our mind made up that we will transfuse, and we're going to transfuse bacterial blood cells, and the patient has agreed, consent already signed, then let's understand what we, we want to do. If the old blood is taken, I'm not saying the entire blood in your body, I mean all blood is taken and put in a tube and it is centrifuged. This is what I'm going to find. The lowermost parts will be red blood cells. And that will be about 45% of the total you know, uh, composition. The uppermost parts will be plasma. That will be about 55%. In between plasma and the red blood cells will be buffy cord. Pretty small, but very important. The buffy cord will contain the platelets and the leukocytes. Now, we must do everything right so as not to you know, endanger the life of the patient. Okay, so right blood product, this time around pile red blood cells to the right person that needs transfusion to be given at the right time and at the right place. Still before putting the blood up and running into the patient, we must have completed everything as per ABO and resource compatibility or incompatibility test. All no blood group is known as universal donor. Universal donor of red blood cells. And they can receive only from O donors as by red blood cells. O negative females, other children or a woman or child bearing age should not receive from O positive donor. Why that? There is issue with pregnancy and resource problems. I don't want to go into details of that. It's either you click on the other link that will take you to two hours and five minutes, or you click on this very link to find out more about resource and pregnancy. All positive should be given and can be given to males, either boys or men, doesn't matter and also females that are already post menopausal. AB is the universal recipe from any group they can receive red blood cells. But the uh, universal donor of plasma. A can only receive from A and O when it comes to red blood cells. B can only receive from B and O. To prevent transmission overload, it is advisable that we use only one unit of pipe red blood cell. That would be okay. And if it is not okay, review later on with the clinical state of the patient. Then, if it is necessary, we start the second unit. But we don't go and get two, three, four, five units at a time. One at the days. Now, it's one unit at a time. You may give more under certain situations. We must aim at non-liberal, otherwise known as restrictive transfusion, just as I've explained. But before going into that, let me quickly chip in something here. It may sound funny. To those who are in rural area or remote parts of the world where they don't have the luxury of having the blood bank that will do it for them, then, have complete blood count or the hematocrit of the donor, please. There was a case of a donor because in that part of the world, donations were tried money. They are being paid. So, someone that is an enemy was already you know, donating already and getting paid and going home. So, they brought the blood and the doctor said, okay, go and do the hematocrit of that you no know, blood has already been brought. You no, know, the sample they took in and running. 
Lo and behold, the hematocrit of the donor was even lower than that of the recipient you know, waiting to receive the same blood. So what's the point? One unit of pancreas blood cells is expected to increase in hemoglobin by one gram per deal. Two hours after transfusion, you can do your complete blood count and hematocrit. The goal or the target is to give or to have 12 gram per DL for women and 13 gram per DL for men. I'm not telling you that you have to continue to transfuse and transfuse and transfuse until you're able to reach this level. No. For example, if this is uh, a case of someone on chemotherapy with hemoglobin of 6 gram per DL before transfusion, how many units will I expect you to transfuse before you reach 12 gram per day? That's not what I'm talking about. That in normal situation, this is what we'll be expecting. Now we'll head to the lab. But in emergency situations, you may not cross match. You just use O negative for all women and all female children. Now, all women of childbearing age and all female children just use O negative. You can grab your O positive for all men, either a child or you no know, adult, doesn't matter, and all women that are no longer you know, bearing children, particularly postmenopausal women. But there's a case of surrogate mother. Um, I've written here that I'll give for explanation. So if a woman is already, you know, Postmenopause, and you said, okay, this is emergency. I'm going to give all positive, but well, that's fine. And maybe a year or two years after, she has chosen to be a surrogate mother. If she had been all negative before being transferred with all positive, that must be part of her history so that appropriate investigations will be done for antibodies and everything to make the determination of her suitability for the surrogate mother or not. Then we must establish the compatibility, of course, ABO group and cross match results and everything, and you discard after three to four days. Let's guide against errors so as to prevent more complications. We have to check the patient's identity, check the donor's identity, establish the correct product. Is it what the physician has prescribed? Mm -hmm. We must find out. Particularly, whole blood is different from pancreatic cells. We must cross-check the indications for the transfusion and then determine the dose and the rate. Why that? Too much or too fast will lead us to tackle, that is, transfusion-associated circulatory overload. Then, we have to prepare our own kit. Okay, we don't just to be proactive, right? Heavy pain in North America, generally in Europe, corticosteroids, abutumab, benadry, H2 blocker, intravenous, lazy, stress, nizamic acid, intravenous, hemoglobin, acetaminophen, and benadry. It is controversial. Some people are even given this pre-transfusion. They will load the patient with this before transfusion will begin. Well, it's even done in advanced countries, but it is controversial because some will argue that about the side effects, the complications of the medications, like acetaminophen, we know the hepatic issues, you no know, hepatic necrosis, right? Mm -hmm. Then they, they, they'll say, no, I will not give it because of that. Well, I don't want to waste your time here because that's why I brought this out of the lengthy presentation if you want further explanation on all this, you can click on this very link. Lasers will be helpful under certain situations, okay, to prevent transfusion overload. So, in elderly, heart failure, body failure, renal failure, myocardial infarction. Further explanation right here. Now, we are with the red blood cells. Back. It's not only red blood cells when it comes to O blood. The entire component, the red blood cell, the white blood cell, the platelet, the plasma, they are all here. 
in one bag with citrate phosphate dextrose as anticoagulant of choice. And we are expected to transfuse the entire component at once to one patient or recipient. That, that is not now welcome anymore. We are no longer doing that in medical field. It's really done nowadays in advanced countries. But in regions of the world where they don't have the luxury of separating you know, any whole blood into the different component, they still use it. Even in advanced countries, you may use it you know, under certain situations. When there is ongoing large blood loss or massive bleeding, you may still go for whole blood. But the summary here right now is that it's really done no, uh, any longer. So, but I will not assume that what is obtainable in advanced countries will be what is available in rural, remote parts of the poor nations. No. Well, if um, the old blood could be separated into the different uh, components or products, why not? Why not just using the pyrrhal blood cells and then you have peace of mind? But I don't blame you if you are in a remote part of the world and you need to save the life and you don't have any means of separating the you know, blood, the old blood to different uh, component, then you still have to use it back. Be careful, you may be running to more you know, blood reactions and overload. So if you are able to separate it into products, you have less reactions and the likelihood of overload will be reduced, particularly if you embark on restrictive transfusion, one unit per patient at a time. Now, the pack red blood cells. Some of us say, oh my goodness, they are just reaching there. Uh -huh. If I have not laid the foundation appropriately, we will run into trouble. So it's like building a house, right? Okay, now digression stops. So pack red blood cells will be stored at four degrees Celsius and could be stored for 35 days. Red blood cells will be in a digital solution. Most of the plasma is removed and then be replaced by saline, adenine, glucose, and mannitol solid. Red blood cells could be washed or irradiated. Pack red blood cells will be needed when hematocrit or total red blood cells are low. But even when that is the case, it's not everyone with low hematocrit that will need you no know, pyrrhal red blood cell transfusion. It is only those that are having symptoms. So when the anemia is symptomatic or the individual is decompensating with shortness of breath, exercise intolerance, dizziness, crowns in the muscles, altered mental status, angina and congestive cardiac failure, then it's time to transfer. Also, in acute blood loss, not everyone with acute blood loss, maybe somebody you know, has uh, a cord in the finger, no. But blood loss that's greater than 30% of the blood volume, then we'll transfer right now. In sickle cell disease, particularly with vessel occlusive crisis and sequestration crisis, I don't have the time to go into details, but if you click on this, I mean, if you click on this link, you will have the full info on that. Sequestration crisis, if it's not you know, salvaged quickly enough, could lead to sudden death. But splenectomy will be the definitive cure for sequestration crisis. I will not be too fast to jump you know, before telling you that sickle cell disease patient can actually tolerate a low level of hemoglobin. They have adapted. So we need the transfusion when they have serious vessel occlusive crisis. For that piece of info, we'll be right here. Okay, still in sickle cell disease patients, they can adapt to low level of hematocrit or hemoglobin. 
they need transfusion only when they convert and when a vessel cruising crisis or sequestration crisis that could be handled definitively with split nitrogen. In acute coronary syndrome, if the hemoglobin is less than 8 grams per deal, transfusion will likely decrease mortality. Higher hemoglobin with acute coronary syndrome doesn't need transfusion. If you transfuse with higher hemoglobin greater than this, then you run into recurring myocardial infarction or you increase mortality. In thalassemia, the goal is hemoglobin 9 to 10 grams per deal. Once we're able to maintain that, we don't need transfusion. Remember, we, are, we will actually be embarking on phlebotomy. So the phlebotomy should be proportional you know, at regular intervals to the target of hemoglobin 9 to 10 grams per deal. Pre-op autologous donation. Here, yeah, patient may choose to donate his or her own blood for his or her own use in an elective surgery. It is a controversial procedure because many surgeons are opting out of that. However, it is good for people with rare blood types when they can't easily get the own type of blood to be transfused with, or certain plasma protein deficiencies are present and it's becoming difficult for them to get the you know, suitable match. So they choose to donate their own blood. Certain criteria must be met, but I will not go into the details of that. If you click on this link, under prior pathological donation right here, through this link, I've explained everything needed. See, under autologous donation, if you want to know certain contraindications, how it is done, and any actual complication or complications, just click on this very link, please. Now, rational pack red blood cell transfusion. Here, restrictive red blood cell transfusion is advisable, not liberal. In restrictive, when hemoglobin is less than 7 grams per DL, they will embark on transfusion, and the goal is to get 8 to 10 grams per DL. But the people that will choose liberal no transfusion will still transfuse when hemoglobin is less than 9 grams per DL, and their own goal is 11 grams per DL. Let me explain for that briefly here, because this is pretty important. Restrictive means you want to use less blood. You know, you don't want cardiac overload. You don't want to waste blood. You want many more people to be able to use blood. One unit at a time. And you will not rush to transfuse unless the anemia has become symptomatic. And then the hemoglobin level is less than 7 grams per DL. And once you are able to be between 8 and 9 grams per DL, just continue to monitor the clinical state of the patient. That is not the case with Libra. The Libra will still transfuse and they will transfuse more than one unit. They will transfuse even at 9 grams per DL or just below it. And their own goal is not 8 or 9 or 10 grams per DL, it's actually you know, something greater than 11 grams per DL. This will waste blood. This will lead to more possible reactions. This will lead to cardiac overload. You know, but this will give us less problem and then the patient will be alive with us. Libra Park Red Blood Cells. That will cost more money. Imagine in the part of the world where blood is being sold, you know, as a donor, you sell the blood, and the recipient must buy the blood. Now, it's not in every part of the world that you have the luxury of just getting into the emergency room, and then or operating room, and then the blood is being supplied just like that, and then you go home. No, it can cost more money when you are buying three, four units. Oh, more blood will be needed. Mm -hmm. 
and mobile will be used under Libra. Volume overload is very possible. No transition as stated, circulatory overload is, is, is a big issue, right? Both on the lungs and the heart. There's no special advantage over the restrictive and likely going to have more infection. Restrictive red blood cell transfusion. Usually one unit per transfusion and then you watch for the clinical state or status of the patient. Well, this is better because it's going to cost less. Less blood will be used because you know, three people will use three units. Unlike three units for one patient under labor, more lives will be saved. They are saving three lives with three units. Unlike saving one life with three units or even giving that one life more you no know, complications. Mm -hmm. Less volume overload or heart or lungs overload. Yes, you may choose to give another unit after clinical review. Um, the giving of a large volume is not a special advantage. We've said you know, that before. There may be transfusion associated circulatory overload. More transfusion reactions is a possibility, like taco and infection. So transfusion reactions could be acute, could be delayed, could be immune mediated, could be non-immune mediated. Infectious, non-infectious. What are we going to do? Are we going to get out? Are we going to stop blood transfusion? Or we just give certain medication and continue transfusion? Under what condition or conditions can we just give acetaminophen and Benadryl and continue the transfusion? When are we expected to stop the transfusion, report to the blood bank, check the patient, give medication quickly? If you want to know all this as per transfusion reactions, click on this variable. With that, I've come to the end of this short presentation on red blood cell transfusion. Like the way I started, I have a longer presentation, about 2 hours 55 minutes, on how we can go about transfusing all blood products. Today, I've limited myself to pack red blood cells. Thanks for listening. Please remember to share this with all your friends. I appreciate it.